so I finally feel like a woodworker now. I bought a bandsaw. This was, I want to say, $129, something like that, shipped to my door. Uh, I think it's an incredibly good value for the price. I, it's just, it's a good little saw. When I ordered this saw, uh, you know, I read every review I could possibly find, and it was a crapshoot. It was a 50-50. Half of them said it was, a, you know, absolute junk. The other half said it did great, so I was semi-skeptical, but I thought, worst case scenario, you know, if it was underpowered or, you know, it wouldn't do what I was hoping it would, I could always modify it. I could put a bigger engine, or an engine, bigger electric motor on it or, you know, whatever I needed to do to make it capable of doing what I wanted. Um, so let me say that every single complaint, every complaint that I read or uh, on the reviews of this this particular saw uh, are inaccurate at least in my saw um, you know one of the one of the things let's go ahead and open this up it's got two knobs on the right hand side twist them clockwise twist the bottom one clockwise and it pops open so we'll open up this face here uh, one of the things that these people were complaining about was that the entire saw is made out of plastic. It's completely made out of plastic, it's junk. Um, well, I don't know how familiar people are with casting, but this is a steel casting. The entire rear section of the saw that all of the critical components are in, such as the upper tensioner, um, bearing housings, they're all in steel. I mean, that is a cast steel housing. So whoever said that that was plastic uh, has no clue in life. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, the front cover is plastic, but there's no structure needed in the cover. I mean, it's it's just to cover the blade and the internal whizzing parts. So, yeah, that complaint went right out the window. Um, another complaint was the saw had no power. In fact, one guy's quote was, it was a gutless wonder. Uh, well, you just, you'll see later in this video, uh, I, I cut through three-quarter inch white oak, 13 sixteenths African mahogany, two by fours, uh, and not slow. I mean, I was not taking it easy on it. And it never even acted like it was low on power. I mean, it just, it cuts great. So, uh, again, it's like $129, I believe. It comes with a fence. Not all of them do. Uh, it comes with this little miter gauge. I have, I would say, two complaints with this saw. The first one being the fence. You can't just loosen the cam and slide it with one hand because it's, it's sloppy enough when the cam's loose that it binds on the table. So you have to use two hands to adjust it and line it up with both of the, uh, both the little measuring tapes here. You have to line up both sides before you clamp it using two hands. So, you know, for me, that's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. A lot of saws this size um, don't even come with a fence. So yeah, if it's a little finicky to set, I don't care. That's just an added bonus for me. Um, it's not like I'm in a big rush. Now this again is the uh, is the Skill Brand nine inch, and what they mean by nine inch is it's the distance from the center of the blade to this throat opening. It's nine inches, so that's the max max size you can fit through it. And this is the Skill model three three eight six. So, it comes with a miter gauge. The miter gauge has a little bit of slop in the, in the track. Um, it's not so much that's going to affect anything I'm doing. If you're going to be building cabinets, well, buy a better saw. You know, if you're going to be doing some sort of production furniture work, this isn't for you. But for, uh, for a guy like me that just needed a bandsaw, or rather an expensive one to do, you know, around the house projects, this thing's fantastic. So let's go over some of the features. All right, so let's see how this thing performs. I've got my fence set up. Uh, this is the only block I have of oak. It is three quarter inch thick. So we'll just go ahead and uh, rip that down using the fence. So we'll fire up the saw. I'll grab a little, little pusher block here. So this is oak, it's pretty hard stuff. As 
you can see, you know, the saw had no issue cutting that at all. I mean, I wasn't feeding it slow either. It's a nice clean cut, and this is pretty hard stuff. So let's uh, let's try some African mahogany. This is what all my my boat frames are made out of: 13 16 African mahogany. down the African mahogany 13 sixteenths and it didn't even slow down didn't miss a beat so. oh let's see we'll go ahead and pull this fence off of here so let's do some uh, some freehand I don't know shape cutting with a 2x4 this is a standard stud Douglas fir 2x4 doesn't have any trouble at all cutting this stuff. I'm, I'm not taking it easy on it either. I'm not cutting slow. Um, and this is the factory blade that's on it, you know. So, I mean, I think that's pretty decent. I really do. Um, it doesn't seem to lack any power whatsoever. I mean, it, it cuts well. So, there's just kind of an idea of, of what this saw can cut. And you know the, the rate of feed and the power of the saw. Okay, so let's fire it up and uh, play with the little miter gauge. We're gonna use another chunk of that two by four, the one we just cut this shape out of. pretty thin if I had to guess it's probably a sixteenth of an inch or so and again I'm not feeding it slow and it never even acts like it wants to slow down it just seems to have plenty of power uh, you know for small stuff like I'm doing again the main reason I got this saw was to cut my 13 16 African mahogany which it does without issue so that's the little miter gauge that comes with it so this is your blade tension knob up at the top you turn it uh, obviously clockwise to adjust the tension, counterclockwise to lower the tension. Uh, we have, let me flip this open. That was another complaint people had. This is plastic. Well, it's steel on mine, so I can't explain that complaint either. Um, we've got a ball bearing rear blade support and your side supports. And then down below, same thing. Ball bearing behind the blade back up here and side supports. Now all of these adjustments for your ball bearing depth, these little side supports, top and bottom, everything on this saw as far as setting it up and adjustment wise is done with the supplied Allen wrench. It's all the same size, which is fantastic. I know a lot of tools don't do that. 
Sometimes you need, you know, two or three end wrenches, two or three different size Allen wrenches. Whoever designed this saw designed it, you know, user friendly. All of the needed or necessary adjustments are all done with the supplied Allen wrench. Same size. So that's fantastic. Um, the saw also has a little side view window here. So you can actually view blade tracking um, while the saw is running or through the side without opening the cover, which is handy. And again, the cover opens with these two little knobs, counterclockwise to lock it, clockwise to open. Uh, it comes with a nice little LED light. The LED light again comes on when you power the saw on. So there's the wheels. And take it easy, you safety Nazis. You shouldn't be running the saw with the door open. I'm a grown ass man, I'll do what I want. So again, it comes with this nice little LED light. I like that you can put it anywhere you want to. It's pretty handy. Um, again, it comes with the fence, comes with the miter gauge. Is the miter gauge cheap? Sure, but it comes with one and I don't need things that, you know, I, I don't have a need for a miter gauge that's capable of cutting, you know, thousandths of an inch accurately. If I have, you know, a 64th off on my cut, it's gonna be fine. It's plenty good enough for me. Um, your blade tracking adjustment is right here. Loosen the nut and tighten or loosen the knob to tilt that wheel in or out to get your tracking dead in the center. So that's a neat little feature. Um, it comes with a safety key. You can pull that yellow out to, to disable the switch so it can't be turned on or off. I guess that's a neat feature. I have it on some of my other tools and on all of my tools, I've never used it. So who knows if you want to use it. Uh, another complaint that people had was that they could not get the table to bolt up, that the holes weren't aligned or that there was a bunch of powder coating in the holes and they couldn't get the bolts tight. Again, that's a problem I didn't have, no issues there. Uh, some people complained that the wheels were severely out of round and that they, uh, you know, they couldn't make an accurate cut because the wheels were so far out of round. Again, I didn't, uh, didn't have that issue. I'm sorry, let me close this up here. Sorry about that. So, uh, let's check it out. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. It, it's actually very quiet. It's the one power tool in my garage that my kids aren't afraid of. So I saw certain bandsaw people talking about the nickel trick. So let's see here. Let's set this nickel up here. I don't know. Apparently, if you can stand the nickel on edge, that's a smooth saw. So it is running, and the nickel's on edge. I don't know. I don't seem to have any problem there. But uh, some of the complaints were, you know, people had that this thing had just, it vibrated so violently that they couldn't make an accurate cut, even clamping it down. I don't have that issue. So I don't know, maybe, maybe they got a, a bad saw, who knows, but I have been extremely happy with this. It's, it's completely capable of doing everything I need it to and, and more. So great so saw. So as far as raising or lowering the guide, it's very simple. Let's get this up out of the way here. You loosen this outer knob and then this is like a rack and pinion. You can see the little rack gear down here. So lower it down, raise it up. That's a neat feature. Some people complained about not needing that on such a small saw. I like it. Um, anyhow, so there's that feature as far as raising and lowering the, the guides. The table does tilt up to 45 degrees and it's the exact same system. You just loosen this outer and then roll the rack left or right for your tilt. And over on this side, there's our angles. Up to 45 degrees on table tilt. So it's a pretty feature packed little saw for the money. Um, I, I love it. I highly recommend this one. It's just right for what I needed. So on the back of the saw here, uh, there is a dust collection port to hook up a shop vac to or your shop dust collection. The motor, I can't, can't remember if it was a third horse or a quarter horse, uh, but it's, it's plenty ample, plenty ample for the saw. It really does well. So this is the base that I made for my saw. It is 31 inches from the floor to the top surface here. 
31 inches. That seems to put it at just a really comfortable height. It's a little taller than waist high for me, um, but it gives me a, an excellent view of where I'm cutting. So that's why I decided on making this table 31 inches. It's made out of two by fours. Uh, I put this little shelf on the bottom to stack crap on because I know I will. And it's just a piece of leftover quarter inch marine ply. The top is leftover piece of three quarter inch marine ply. This is all from my boat building, just stuff I had laying around. All of the angles are 10 degree angles. So, you know, 10 degree, 10 degree, 10 degree, 10 degree. Down at the bottom, they're the same. This crossover is the same. It's all 10 degree angles. That gives it, you know, a little wider stance. It's very solid and I'm in it. Jeez, I don't know. If you count the, I reclaimed the screws out of my setup mold. Um, two by fours were out of the chip pile at work. So that was about four dollars worth of two by fours. Um, and I had the ply sitting around. So if you want to count the glue, I guess I'm in this thing about, I don't know, ten bucks. But great little stand, just what I needed. Fantastic saw.